Okay. Now we back. All right. So as I mentioned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some line items in regards to uh, what needs to be done. Okay. In order to start your own business. Right. So now what I want you to think about, I want you to think about a good idea versus a skill. Now we have plenty of good ideas. Uh, as we are doing certain things, good ideas pop up into mind. But here's the thing. Can you turn that good idea that you have into a skill? And if you can turn that good idea into a skill, then you can take that skill and you can build a business from it. Because somebody came up with the idea uh, that cars need to be maintained. Somebody came up with the idea that there were going to be issues uh, within a person's residence that need to be fixed by a handyman. Somebody came up with that idea. And so all it takes is a good idea that translates into a skill, and then you can build your business from that skill, okay? So now let's get into a couple of things. The first thing I want to talk about really tonight is uh, branding. That's something that you have to put a lot of thought and effort into because your branding is the way that you present yourself to the world. So uh, it would have to do with your website. It would have to do with uh, your business cards, the logo that you choose. Uh, all of those things are necessary. But now, uh, if I were to recommend a certain service uh, that you could uh, develop and produce these things on your own, uh, it would be the service called Canva. C-A-N-V-A. It's a website that you can go to. And uh, all of the branding ideas that you would have the colors that you would need the logos and things of that sort uh, even printed materials you can order from them all of that can be done on that particular website as a matter of fact if you've seen any of the thumbnails any of the images for my live shows as well as my podcast then all of those particular images were made inside canva but then let's say for instance in regards to your branding let's say that you are not a tech savvy. Is there still some hope for you? Absolutely. You can use the website Fiverr. And so with this particular website, uh, there are individuals who are sitting and waiting to help you design your brand, the colors that you would need, the logos, the uh, business cards, your website, all of those things from beginning to end. But now what's really important about your brand, I would say, is that you make sure that it's something that's eye-catching. Uh, your logo, your uh, the, the the tagline that you use underneath your logo on your business cards, all of that needs to be eye-catching. And it needs to deal with the particular skill that you're offering. So if you are, are a, uh, let's say, a landscaper, uh, then your logo needs to suggest that that's your business. Your tagline needs to suggest that that's your business. Everything about your branding should lend itself to what it is that you do so that on contact with any of, of, of your media, whether it be a business card, whether it be a flyer, whether it's a website, whether it's a post on Facebook or Instagram, on contact, individuals should be able to identify what it is you do. So branding is very important. And then another thing about branding, branding will allow you to uh, reach farther because now, uh, individuals normally they do word of mouth right they take the recommendations of others in regards to certain skills that they need but now if you are branded correctly then the skills that you offer uh, can uh, turn into very lucrative skills uh, that may not be apparent to you at the time so now you're a landscaper right but now you have a website and maybe an Instagram page or a Facebook page and you uh, put up images of your finished product, uh, then that could lead into a situation where individuals uh, want to come to you and get trained in certain things that you might do. That's in any skill. Uh, individuals who want to know more about the skill that you possess, they might want to come and receive training from you. And that's another way uh, that you can add revenue to your bid. So, just be open-minded about the way that you brand your business so that you can uh, uh, have many individuals coming in and bringing revenue to you. All right. So now it wasn't too hard, was it? The first topic. 
All right. And then another thing, too, when you're branding that particular business, right, at this particular point, you got the branding, you know how you want it to look, you know the colors. Now it's time to actually start setting up some of the structure of your business. So you would want to set up your company email, PayPal, and then cash out. Now, the company email is going to come in handy later on when you apply for your uh, employer's identification number. You're going to need a business email. And then when you register with both the IRS for federal and state, you're going to need that also. Uh, and then when you go to get your business license, you'll need a business email also. Uh, uh, normally, that's how they communicate with you, through email and through letters. Uh, but normally, email is faster and more efficient. So... Uh, why did we say PayPal and Cash App? Well, now that's that's apparent. Uh, if you have uh, clients, customers, individuals that you do business with, these forms of payment are the quickest. And these forms of payment uh, come with uh, verification that you will receive your funds. Uh, so, you know, an individual is paying through Cash App or they're paying through PayPal. Those funds have to be available in order for it to go through. And so that's a protection for you. And then also the PayPal and the Cash App situation will also allow you to pay others if necessary. If there are things that you need to be done, then you can uh, pay them rapidly also. So now those are some of the things in regards to branding. All right. So now we're about to get into the more difficult parts of starting your own business. Okay. Because as I mentioned, you have to have an employee identification number or employee's identification number, pardon me. So where do you get that from? Where is that? Now, there are a lot of individuals who can tell you about, you know, an EIN. There are a lot of individuals who uh, offer their services for it, but I'm here to tell you that you don't need any of that, okay? If you can bring up a browser and go to a website, you can apply for your own EIN. Let me show you. All right. So we're going to share a screen. And let's go to the IRS website. Okay. So something I want you to notice also. Uh, this is a secure site. This is the official site. Because if you notice at the top, you have the logo, the official logo of the IRS. And uh, this page is secure, so you, you don't have to worry about your personal information. So what you would do is you would scroll down. And these three steps are steps that uh, will happen. First, you determine your eligibility. There's some information that they need from you that you can uh, supply online or you can supply by means of a hard copy. We'll go through that. And then when you get to the application, there's uh, there should be intention in the way that you move because you only have 15 minutes to fill it out. After the 15 minutes are up, then you will see that the web page will kick you out. Uh, so it's necessary for you to have in mind the things that you want to supply or that you have to supply. But now here's the thing. Here's the thing I want you, I want you to look at. Instead of me recommending that you go to the website first, uh, I want you to do something different. Now, if you notice, on this particular website, let's see, what did I do with it? So you go to apply now, apply online now. Okay. That's what I was looking for. So now, if you notice at the very bottom, let's see if we can make that a little bit bigger. I want to show you something. At the very bottom, it says, if you are not comfortable sending information via the internet, download form SS4 PDF file and the instructions for alternative ways of applying. So what I'm recommending is download the PDF, right? It's interactive. So you download it and you can fill it in right on your PC or on your phone or whatever you're using to access the internet. And then after you fill out this form, this SS4, then you can take that information and submit it online because you've already come up with your business name. You've already 
filled in the address and all that information, and then you can submit it. Now, let's take a look at it if we can, okay? I'll stop sharing that particular page. Now let's find the other one. Okay, here we are. Now this is the SS4 form. As we mentioned now, it is application for employer identification number. All right, now I must admit when you first look at this now, everything looks kind of challenging, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't look like <laughs> something that we usually uh, would tackle, but here again, it's okay, because with the uh, particular form, there are two sheets. There's the actual form that you have to fill out, and then the second sheet is actually what you, what is the purpose that you're filling this form out for. Now, let's say, for instance, you are starting a new business. There would be this line right here, the first line, okay? So you're starting a new business, and so because you're starting a new business, uh, and it mentions there uh, you don't currently have or in, in expect to have employees. And so now, what do you do then? Well, you take the form and you complete lines 1, 2, 4A to 8A, 8B and C, 9A and 9B, if applicable, and then you complete lines 10 through 14 and 16 through 18. So those are the only lines that you have to fill out. That's depending on whether or not you are the individual who is starting the business and you don't have any employees, okay? So now, that's one of the harder things to do. Once you get this knocked out, really, uh, the majority of the work you've done. And so as I mentioned, when you go online, the same format will be present online. The questions will be asked one by one and you'll be able to fill those questions in according to the EIN that you already have, okay? So now, we are uh, looking at starting a business. We're looking at EINs, but here's one important factor that you have to keep in mind when you're filling out your EIN. And that factor is what kind of a business are you starting, okay? There are actually six kinds of businesses. And as you see them listed on screen, partnership, corporation, sole proprietorship, limited liability corporation, S corporation, and cooperative. Now, the majority of the time, you will find that most people, most people set up an LLC, a limited liability corporation. An LLC uh, is a little bit different from the rest of the businesses. Uh, because there are no articles of incorporation that you have to file with your LLC. Uh, it, uh, and amongst all of them, it probably is uh, about the easiest to get started, apart from the sole proprietorship. But the LLC is something that most people go with. Now, in order for you to understand the differences between these businesses, we're not going to cover that tonight. Do some research and see which one fits you, which one would be best for you, which one would have the most benefit for you as a business, okay? So now, now that we've done that, one of the things that we also have to understand is that uh, after we've attained the EIN, uh, after we've done all the branding, we're ready to move forward, but there are still a couple of steps in this process that we have to address, okay? So now, uh, when you're looking at using your EIN, right? Uh, it's necessary for you to then focus on formation of a business. Now in every state, the formation of a business is di different, but in every state acquiring an EIN is the same because the federal government issues out EINs. And so whatever state that you're from, if you fill out that, that document that it says for and you do it correctly, then they'll be able to provide you with an EIN. But now it differs from state to state how it is that you form a business. Now in uh, the state of Mississippi, let's look at it. We're interested in how it is that we can form a business. Now in the state of Mississippi, what you would want to do is you would want to go to the Secretary of State's uh, webpage. And the Secretary of State's webpage 
uh, gives you the option to form a business. So where do you find it? Okay, so what you're looking for is business services and regulation. So you would click there. And then when that page opens up, what you're looking for then is file business documents. Okay. And then after that, now here, here is where you will have to register uh, for your particular business. But now my information is already there, so we'll go further. So now this is what it will look like after you've uh, registered for this particular website. The registration is pretty easy. Uh, it, it's nothing too difficult. But after you registered and you have access to this particular website, then you would look for form a Mississippi corporation, nonprofit, LLC, partnership, or cooperative. And so like we mentioned, uh, most people uh, file an LLC. So now let's go in and look at it. Form an LLC. Let's give it some time to boot up. Okay. So now here is where the form begins. And so you would a talk you would put here the type of business that you have and as we mentioned we're looking at a, a llc and now here is all the information that you have to supply okay so as i mentioned you have the business name this first let me see if we can make this just a little bit larger okay so you have a business name that you have to supply first and that's mandatory okay and then the next thing is the business email that will be next, okay? And then, now, this is this is something that you have to do some research on, too. Uh, the NIAX code. So, what this code is, it's a way of, of telling about the nature of your business, right? And so, you can search for the particular codes that fit you. Now, uh, my codes have to do with computer repair, computer refurbishment, and then also a uh, setup of office equipment. That's just a few of the codes that apply to my particular LLC. So now after you've, uh, if you've gone in and you've found those codes and you've listed th at least three codes there, that's what's required, okay? Three codes. After you've done that, then make sure that uh, you put in the uh, future effective date when you want to start the company. Uh, when you want to actually form it, because when you got your EIN, that was the beginning of starting your company. Now, the formation of your business is what we're tackling now. So you put the date in that uh, you want to form your business. And then uh, here is the information for uh, an individual who you hired to set up the formation of your business or whether or not you're doing it yourself. Here's the information that you would have to put in. Now, this is your information. So you would put your first and last name, you put your address and so forth, right? And then you would put your own personal email address. And then you would sign off on this particular document, okay? Now, usually what happens is there is a $25 fee for the formation of the business. Uh, now, when I paid it, uh, that was probably about, 2006, it was $25. But due to inflation, it may be more than that. So make sure you check on it, okay? Make sure you're aware of it. So now, we formed the business. We have the EIN. We have the branding. We formed the business. We're doing pretty good, okay? So now, uh, we have to tackle, and I know a lot of people hate this, but it's, it is what it is. We have to tackle taxes, because you uh, filed the EIN with the federal government, they are aware now that you are a business, but now you have to also file your EIN with the state government, the state branch of the IRS. So how do you do that? All right, let's do it again. Now we're going to, this time, we're going to go to a website. And let's see if we can get to it. Uh, the Mississippi Department of Revenue. Let's re restart. Okay. So it's called TAP, Mississippi Taxpayer Access Point. So from this particular website, what you do is you go in and register for it also. 
have your EIN ready, have your business email ready, and then you would go in and you would register your EIN with the uh, state branch of the IRS. That's what you would do. Because now when you uh, start working, you're going to have to pay taxes to both the federal and state governments. Okay. So I want to prepare you for that because when I started, <laughs> I had a bit of a difficulty because uh, I was mo mostly concerned with the federal taxes and I didn't think about the state taxes, but they, they made it clear to me that I had to pay them too. So it is what it is on that. All right. So now we've done the branding. We've done the business type and the EIN. Uh, we've done, uh, they're using the EIN uh, as far as business formation and registering uh, on the state level for taxes. So now uh, what I want to do, I want to make sure that I'm clear about this. There are individuals, nefarious individuals online that are attempting to gain your information by posing as entities that can set these things up for you. Now, in this particular case, what I would recommend, if you are not comfortable uh, with this particular procedure, because I understand that there are a couple of steps that go with it. If you're not comfortable uh, when it comes to obtaining an EIN, if you're not comfortable with registering uh, with the state level IRS, if you're not comfortable with the business formation, I would personally sit down with either an accountant or someone else that's qualified to help you with that particular procedure. I would not attempt to do that with online services because you got to understand now that the EIN that you set up, uh, now there is, if you allow it to, it can be used to start bank accounts. It can be used to obtain credit. And so it's very important uh, that you enlist the help of someone that's trusted someone that has proven over time that they have a track record that can be trusted okay let me stop sharing that for a moment okay and so that's those are the basic steps of how to start your own business uh, so it's necessary that you take all of these steps in order to move forward now why is it important then that you know you even go through those steps when it comes to a business. Well, as I mentioned, um, when you have your EIN and you have a, a business that has already been formed and filed with both the federal and state level IRS, now you can begin to work and you can begin to build credit for yourself. You can begin to uh, take on larger products and projects, I should say, because now you put yourself in the position where you can obtain funding if necessary. So what, what's going on is, is simply this. When you obtain the EIN and you've already formed the business, then you can take your EIN to the bank of your choice and you can request help with setting up a business account. Okay? In this particular uh, instance, let me caution you about something. What I would recommend you do is have separate accounts. Uh, you have a, a business account that's specifically used for your business. Uh, individuals pay you to that account. And if necessary, if there are things that you need for your business, then you pay for those things from that business account. And then you have a personal account. Because now what happens is this, when it's tax time, what you can do then, because you only use this account for business, you can go back in your business account and you can calculate all of the expenses that you had for that particular year. And you can do it easily because you have an account where the only thing you have used it for is your business. So all of the funding that's coming in is for your business. All of the funds that are leaving out is for your business. Right. And so it's easy because now you're in a, a situation where you can take it to an accountant, right? And you all can file your taxes with ease, okay? Now, uh, one thing that I would also like to suggest if you're starting a business, understand that 
This is a difficult process. This is a difficult process. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to paint a picture for you that's sweet, and it's not. So in order to circumvent the difficulties that you might have in your business, this is one thing I recommend, and I'm very staunch when it comes to this. Hey, Tasha. So what I would recommend is if you have a nine to five, right? You have a steady paying job. What I would recommend you do is save up at least, listen to me now, at least a year. Save up at least a year. Now, and when I say saving, what I mean is you have uh, your regular personal account that you use. You have your savings account. But then what I would say also is that you have another account where you are saving to offset the difficulties that are going to come as a result of your business. So why am I saying, why am I saying have two savings accounts? Okay. The reason why I'm saying that is this. Your savings account, your personal savings account should be used for hard times, right? But that's the thought I would push. It should be used for hard times. It should be used as a mechanism uh, for your personal life, okay? The secondary savings account is used to offset all of the bills and the responsibilities that you will have for at least a year, okay? Within that year, you'll be able to see whether or not this business is going to stay afloat or whether or not it's going to fail. And that's important because in the midst of trying to start this business, you do not want to put your family in a difficult position. If you have bills that have to be paid, if you have uh, other necessities that have to be put in place, think ahead and make sure that you have what you need in order to offset those deficiencies. This is important because I've seen, I've had friends who have entered into this particular realm to try to start a business and fail miserably because of the fact that they didn't plan ahead. You have to be thinking ahead in order to make this work, okay? And contrary to popular belief, as I mentioned, this is a lot of work. So put the work in, and I guarantee you, you'll benefit. Now, another suggestion that I have in regards to this too is uh, focus on as we mentioned in the beginning, a particular skill. If you have a skill, make sure that that skill, uh, what you do, you're the best at it. And if you're not the best, uh, then the way that you go about it is so good that people can't tell. You understand me? So if you're a plumber, be the best plumber that you possibly can be. If you're a craftsman, be the best craftsman because this particular skill, if you're going to use it as a business, it has to be one that's so good uh, that it speaks for itself. So when you are finished with a particular project, the individual who you're working for has no other choice but to recommend you because you're that skilled. Let's see, that's what I mean. This is intentional. This is forethought. This is preparation. So if there are new techniques that you have to know about if there are, are maybe new products that could help you do your job better then it's your responsibility to find these new techniques these new products and bring yourself up to speed on them so that you can use them uh, so that you can further your client base because that's what uh, this is we want to make sure that the business stays afloat and it does that by means of clients by means of customers by means of individuals who pay you for the skill that you have. And so if an individual is going to pay, they most definitely want to see what they pay you for. And because of the fact that you've taken the time to be the best that you possibly can be at that skill, it won't be hard to find that uh, you're good at what you do, right? So now, uh, one of the things too uh, that I would like to recommend, uh, when you have a nine to five also, and now hear me out now, I'm not speaking against anyone uh, that's working a nine to five. Your business could also be a situation where what you're doing is simply supplementing the income that you already have. Maybe you're saying, okay, I have a goal of buying a house by the end of the year, or I have a goal of buying a new car by the end of the year. Then going through this process of setting up a business 
may be the answer to that particular situation. That skill that you have, the business that you form could quite possibly help you to reach your goal. And one thing too, I've noticed, and I'm gonna start rambling. Uh, what you'll find out is, especially during the pandemic, what I found out is that being a business owner and an active business owner at that, you know, one who has honed my skills to the best of my ability, I found out that the only way I stayed afloat was not due to uh, the larger contracts that I had, but the smaller ones, the smaller contracts, the contracts that dealt with a very small skill, but that particular skill became needed. And that skill I'm talking about, and I know you're going to find this to be funny, but it's mounting televisions. So how did I go from engineering to mounting television? It's because you diversify in order to help your business to stay afloat. Whatever skill you have, notice this now, whatever skill that you have, you can hone that skill into something lucrative because you never know when it'll be needed. So as I mentioned, how did I go from engineering to mounting television? Mounting television was something that I did on the side, right? But when the pandemic hit, individuals were looking for people to mount televisions. I, I can remember weekends coming away with over $500 by just hanging televisions up, putting them on the wall. So uh, be open, be open to the possibility that there are new skills new products, new avenues of using your skill that will be necessary for you to learn so that you can put those skills into action to keep yourself afloat, okay? I would never recommend to anyone who is working a nine to five job just to jump out there. I can't recommend it for you. And the reason why I can't recommend it for you is because that's what I did too. Uh, I was uh, very unhappy with the job that I was working, so I just without a parachute, without a, a forethought, without anything. I just jumped out there. I cannot allow you to do the same thing. What I want you to do is to be deliberate. I want you to think about the process that I've shared with you tonight, and I want you to be an individual who puts forethought and effort into what it is that you're trying to work toward, uh, whether it be a full-time business or whether it's something that you do on the side to supplement your income, be intentional because who knows? that particular business that you set up uh, may be something that you can hand on to your children. It may be something that you can turn into a family business. And that family business will sustain not just you, but your children to come. So now those are the thoughts that I have uh, in regards to it. Once again, now let's go back over that just to make sure. Uh, come up with a skill or evaluate yourself to see what skills you have that could possibly uh, uh, be used to start a business. And after you've isolated a skill, something that you are phenomenal at, then begin to look at the branding, your logos, your or maybe your T-shirts that you might have, business cards, flyers, things of that sort. Look at those things in an effort to try to attract individuals to you, right? That's what branding is all about. Branding is about attraction. It's about letting an individual know what it is that you do, but letting them know it the moment that they look at some of your media, right? We mentioned that. And then the next thing is with branding, make sure to set up a business email, PayPal, and Cash App. Now there are other applications that you can use to be paid, but I found that PayPal and Cash App are some of the most reliable, okay? Then the next thing, we're, we're talking about business type and EIN. So I supplied for you the official website of the IRS where you can go and get your own EIN, okay? Then after you've obtained that EIN, uh, within the EIN, make sure that you have done some research to see which of the types of businesses uh, you want to start. Do you want to start a partnership, a corporation, a sole proprietorship? Do you want to start an LLC? Which one of these do you want to start up? But now that's up to you to do that research, okay? Uh, if we didn't, we'd be here all day on that one, okay? And then after you've done that, uh, then uh, 
what I would recommend is instead of going online to that official website and going in to fill out the information for the EIN, what I would recommend is you download the SS4 form that's on the IRS website. As I mentioned, that's an interactive PDF form. And what it will allow you to do is to fill out all the information that would be necessary for you to file your EIN with the IRS, but it will be in a situation where you're not timed. When you go online to file uh, for your EIN, the time limit is 15 minutes. And so you have to meet that time limit or else they're going to start you over. Okay. So why not download the PDF, fill it out. And then another thing too with that, if you have the PDF and you uh, have a problem with uh, maybe number 16, maybe you have a problem with number nine, then you can take that information that you're having problems with and you can research it or you can take it to an accountant or someone or, or who's knowledgeable about EINs and business okay that's one good thing that you can do too that will prepare you for uh, you know later on going online and submitting all that information as we mentioned after you submitted the form online filled out all the necessary information almost immediately uh, they will send you your EIN and they'll send you a document that proves that this is your EIN and it'll have the uh, seal, the, the seal from the federal government, from IRS, you'll be ready to go, okay? But then the next thing uh, is business formation. Now, as I mentioned, uh, to get the EIN, it's the same across the board. For all 50 states, it's the same because the IRS is issuing it out to you. The federal government is, okay? But now as far as business formation, it's different for each state. So make sure that you check on what the requirements for business formation are for your state. Now, the Secretary of State is where you would go. His website, if you are a resident in the Mississippi area, it may be different for other states, okay? So make sure that you research and find that out. Then after you form your business, then make sure that you register your EIN with the state branch of the IRS. So if you're living in Texas, you need to uh, file with the Texas branch of the IRS. If you're living in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts branch of the IRS and so forth. And then what you want to do then is after you have all this information together, what you want to do is you want to go in uh, to uh, the bank of your choice. And what you'll do is you'll uh, Take that information, your EIN, the business, the proof of the business formation. And what you can do now is apply for a business account. Now, as I mentioned, now I'm going to repeat this because it's important. Your business account is separate from your personal account. The two should never mix. And the reason why the two should never mix is because at the end of the year, when you get ready to do your taxes, it'll be a breeze because all of the funds that come into that business account are for the business. All of the funds that leave that account are for the business. And so when you get ready to do your taxing, when you get ready to file a 1040 or, or the forms that you would need according to the particular type of business you have, it will be easier for you. You can take uh, your uh, account, your business account, uh, the, the record of what you spent, what you taken in and you can take it to an account and then they can help you step through how to file your taxes with no problem. And then the next thing is, uh, as we mentioned, we're suggesting that you be intentional with forming your business. Uh, make sure that you have adequate savings so that your family doesn't fall into a difficult situation because you're attempting to get a business up and running. Right? So, uh, for the first year, I'll be honest with you, I didn't turn a profit, period. Matter of fact, I lost. And that'll happen sometimes. But what you'll notice is uh, within a, a three-year period, what usually happens is that business starts to get better and better and better because more individuals know you and they're familiar with your work. Uh, word of mouth is starting to spread. And if you've done the very best that you can on each and every project that you're involved in, that word of mouth will undefinitely, it will definitely be positive. Okay. So now, uh, after having said all that, why have you not started a business? 
Well, I hope that tonight's uh, discussion was one that will prepare you for it because it absolutely can be done. Now, it's going to be difficult. But then what do you know worth having that isn't difficult? Uh, there has to be a sufficient amount of work and dedication that's put into it in order for it to uh, produce dividends to you and your family. But now just think for a moment. What if you're successful? What if this particular business that you're starting, uh, it assists not only you, but your children and then their children? Wouldn't it be worth the effort? Wouldn't it be something to uh, really work hard to achieve? Well, I'm here to tell you that that's absolutely possible because uh, the small business that I have here, I'm continuing to work on it and hopefully I'll be able to pass it on to my children when they become of age. Well, as always, you know, we appreciate everyone for tuning in. Uh, I see a couple of friends that are in the comment section. Kevin Hall, man, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen you, brother. I hope things are going well. t Bet, I see you, man. Rob, hope everything's going well for you all. Uh, if there are any questions that you all have, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'm here. If I can help you, I will. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Be easy.